What's going on guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to Late's Hoops. Today's video, we're coming back with episode two of who will win an NBA championship first. If you guys haven't seen the first one where we talked about Trey Young and Luka Doncic, it'll be the first link in the description and I advise you to check it out after this video. Today's video will feature Devin Booker and Jason Tatum. We're gonna be looking at each player's play style, situation, and coaching, and then we're gonna make a verdict. As always, I encourage you guys to leave your opinions in the comments below. And before we get started real quick, I want to say that 97% of you guys who are watching these videos are not subscribed. I don't want to force anyone's hand, but if you guys are enjoying the content, I would greatly appreciate if you hit that sub button. Without further ado, let's get started talking about Jason Tatum and Devin Booker's play styles. For starters, JT. He plays with such a great brand of basketball these days. And honestly, I'm really proud of how he's grown not only as a player, but as a leader in the past six years. He's always had a knack for scoring the ball with an efficient clip but this year and last year he's been taking a tremendous leap on the defensive side of the ball i've said this before and i'll say it again it's very easy to miss or forget how good tatum is on the defensive side of the ball and that's just because of the fact that they have someone like marcus smart whose entire identity is the defensive side of the ball tatum has also grown as a facilitator over his years in the league not to the scale that you'd hope but for a three his improvement from 1.6 assists in his 80 game rookie year to now averaging a comfortable four four and a half it's really nice to see hopefully one day we can see that number go up to five or maybe even six but throughout this year and his career he's had the teammates like Kyrie Irving in the past or Terry Rozier in the past that are just more than capable of kind of creating and facilitating for him but now we even have people like Malcolm Brogdon who just got brought back in which I'm sure he'll find his official role on this team facilitating obviously in Indiana he averaged upwards of eight assists but this season what's really surprising me is that Marcus Smart is averaging a team high 7.6 assists a night and that's actually up two and a half assists from last year every year it seems like he's becoming a better playmaker which is amazing because I'm not the biggest fan when he's shooting the ball but if he's making great plays on the offensive side of the ball through his facilitating it's great for Tatum and the Celtics outside of the defense and playmaking we all obviously know the offensive capability that Tatum puts possesses. Currently, he's averaging almost 31 points on nearly 50% from the field and 36% from the three to go along with his four assists and eight rebounds. Devin Booker, on the other hand, is averaging 28 and a half points, five rebounds, and six assists on nearly 50% from the field and 40% from three-point land. Devin, he obviously has such an old-school play style, at least on the offensive side of the ball, and if you don't know what I mean, I'm just saying he gets to his spots on the floor patiently and efficiently gives you buckets night in and night out unless he's playing against the Mavs apparently Luka is still his daddy but for this video we're just gonna ignore that and push it to the side like Tatum I'm proud of how Book has been stepping into his leadership role this season with CP3 already missing 15 games Cam Johnson missing 17 games and Jay Crowder not even suiting up a single game this season because he's resilient too obviously you guys know he wants a trade this Suns team is still nowhere near their full potential potential obviously with all the injuries that they're facing but through Booker's play style and newly found vocalness they still sit as the number one seed in the Western Conference which leads us to the Suns as a whole like I said they're the one seed and currently boast a record of 16 and 8 DeAndre Ayton he has looked amazing this year coming out strong averaging 17 and 10 on 62 percent from the field without CP being there to help him get his easy go-ahead buckets I'm sure we'll see that number 17 jump up to 19 or 21 towards the end of the season or towards playoff time. But outside of DeAndre, I have to give my props to Tory Craig and especially Michael Bridges. There's a lot of other names that for this video I'm not going to name because it is about Tatum and it is about Booker. But as for Michael Bridges, he's averaging 15, 5, and 3 on nearly 50, 40, 90 splits. He's been lights out from downtown shooting that 44%, and he's still keeping his ticket in the Defensive Player of the Year raffle. Top to bottom, this Suns roster has great energy, and I can't wait to see them get 
healthy again. And as for the Celtics, they've come out on fire to start this season. They're the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, and they currently boast a record of 20-5. and five. This team looks as hungry as ever to make it back to the finals. And if we're going off what, what the legendary Phil Jackson said, they're on pace to make it back. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Phil Jackson has a philosophy that if a team reaches 40 wins before 20 losses, they're instantly contenders. If you guys need some proof, here's the last four championship winners. And as you guys can see, they all follow the rule and we all know what happened. They were winners and they're holding that trophy high still to this day. JT and JB are probably the league's best duo. I made a whole video about that if you guys want to check it out. And Malcolm Brogdon, he's been fitting very well off this roster. I do wonder if he'll ever get starting minutes, but that's just something that Joe is going to have to kind of play with as the season goes on. Something I'm really, really looking forward to is the Time Lord Robert Williams making his debut or return for this squad. Last season, he averaged a quiet 10 points and 10 rebounds for them, but that's not really what I'm looking for. It's his defensive presence that this team is desperately going to need when they're facing, you know, the Bam Adebayos or the Giannis Antetokounmpo's or the Kevin Durant's and the Eastern Conference that they'll inevitably see in the playoffs. And speaking of playoff time, now we have to talk about the final aspect of these two teams before we make a verdict. And that's the coaching, because in the playoffs, as you guys know, coaching really does win games. For the Suns, Monty Williams has been putting on a coaching masterclass for the Suns the last two seasons, and it's been amazing to watch. Obviously, the records, they've been speaking for themselves. They've been the one seed over the last two seasons. And the players, they have nothing but good things to say about Monty. Devin Booker had especially high praise for coach saying, he means everything. He's a real one. He's one of those people that when you're talking to him, he looks you directly in the eyes and you feel everything that he said. It's much bigger than the sport of basketball. He likes to develop personal relationships and all the basketball stuff is a bonus. We just share a common interest or a common love for the game. He really genuinely cares about how you're doing and how you are in your day-to-day -day life. If that isn't a player's coach or a guy that you want to play for, I don't know what is. Through the drama and ups and downs of this last offseason, you know, losing to the Dallas Mavericks and then having to struggle with the previous owners to start this season, Monty and the rest of the guys in the Suns organization have kept it strictly basketball and strictly professional and in a world where media runs everything, I admire that a lot. As for the Celtics, they currently have interim coach Joe Mazzulla running the show, and he has been outstandingly great to start this year off. I'm not sure if Emeka Adoga is going to make his return this year or even the next or ever because that suspension obviously is outgoing, but I do know that Joe has given me Will Hardy vibes, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just saying that as a first-year coach, he's coming in with all the right ideas and philosophies, he's playing the hot hand, he's switching up rotation rotations he's not sticking five in and five out and he's been very adamant about praising his guys when they step up to the plate on both sides of the ball the other day i saw an interview with joe where a reporter asked him how much he trusts tatum and without a single hesitation he said 1000 percent and that's the type of guy that you want to play for just like i said with monty but now that we've talked play style team construction and team coaching it's time to make a verdict on who is going to win a championship first but before i say my thoughts I just want to remind you guys that I am one man's opinion and I always, always, always encourage you guys to either challenge me or tell me why you agree with me or just tell me your own opinions even if you don't agree or you don't hate what I'm saying. This channel is all about you guys and your opinions. I think this is the hardest verdict I've had to make on this channel because on one hand, I want to say that Tatum and the Seas are just the clear-cut, runaway, better team right now and that they'll win a championship sooner than they would. They were so close close last year but on the other hand I see the Suns and what they've done the last two years in the regular season obviously I know the championship is a postseason award and I think that this could be the last year for them to win under CP so I just wonder when they get healthy what kind of hunger they're going to display it's hard for me to predict the future of this team especially with how banged up they are like I said I would also like to think that both Book and Tatum will stay with their respective rosters their entire career or team not rosters obviously that's subjected to change 
but I do think that both of these players will win championships, but I have to give this one to Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics. I think this year really could be the year for them to go out and shock the world, bringing that victorious nature back to TD Garden. They're hungry as ever, and Tatum, even dating back to his rookie year, has been a winner if you think about it. His first playoff experience ever, he's taking LeBron and the Cavs to seven games without Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving. I mean, his playoff resume is insane insane when you really think about how close and how he's been a few games away from the finals every single year and this year the Celtics roster it's just so amazing the Suns in my opinion they had their clear-cut shot at winning the championship back at 2021 against the Bucks in hindsight it's obviously very easy for me to critique and say things like that but it's just true up 2-0 you should never lose a series like that the Suns core of AM Bridges and Booker will be great for years to come but I'm just curious to see who fills that point guard role once CP eventually hangs him up. But what do you guys think? Will Jason Tatum and Devin Booker win an NBA championship first? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate the support. And if you're in the 19% of the people who are watching this right now because you guys watch all the way through, I appreciate you more than you ever know. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.